Hello, and in this tutorial, what I want to do is sort of discuss how we can um, render out uh, different uh, different texture channels if we're trying to for for review purposes. So, for example, here I've got a render here, and this is the sort of final beauty pass that we're seeing being rendered out here. Uh, and obviously, this is this is. Uh, an AI standard surface shader with the normal map, map applied, a diffuse uh, shade, uh, diffuse um, channel applied, and a specular roughness channel applied. But what if I wanted to see this and actually just see the actual normal map uh, uh, and specular roughness and and, uh, uh, and diffuse channels uh, uh, separately? And obviously, just rather than seeing them as a flat map applied in UV space, which isn't really that clear. Uh, uh, is, is, isn't visually that clear. I want to actually see it applied to this um, uh, this helmet. Okay, so uh, a simple approach we can do is to just open up the hypershade. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. And I've already got the material open in the hypershade here. Okay, uh, let me just try and minimize some of this stuff here. Let's make that. I think if I get rid of that, can I get rid of that? Yeah, okay, that, that gives a bit more space, right? And I'm just going to make this a little bit larger. Here we go, okay. So you can see this is our, um, uh, our material here, okay? Uh, and uh, what I can do is, um, and you can see we've got a diffuse channel here, we've got a specular channel here, and we've got a normal channel here. And these each have um, different um, uh, texture maps uh, being applied to them. So for me to see this texture map on an object, what we can do is if I click solo here, okay, so I'm going to click, you can see I've clicked on the S there to solo it to say that I want to see that. Okay, and then what I can do, I'm going to try and put them up next to each other. Wish me luck. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Okay, hang on. Let's just, sorry, it's going to battle my uh, machine here for its docking. Oh, I love the docking. There we go. Okay, don't want you to dock. Just want you to go like this. That's fine. Okay, I think we'll make it work like this. So, where were we? Uh, so, I've got my diffuse channel here. I've clicked solo. OK, and then what I can do is I can click this button here and what that will do is it will render out just what we soloed in this layer. And then what I can do is just go file, uh, save image to save this out. And I can save it as a PNG or a JPEG or whatever. And I can then save that and use that in whatever um, uh, uh, whatever meeting uh, uh, I want to have uh, uh, to uh, discuss the the. Uh, the, the the texturing okay so I could put that uh, I could put that together in a presentation put them side by side whatever I need to do okay next thing uh, so if I want to do a different channel all I've got to do is just solo a different channel so you can see there are I've soloed the um, uh, sorry I've soloed the uh, uh, the specular roughness don't know why I struggled with that and then here's the normal map okay um, I don't know whether you might need to edit the normal map just to kind of see the detail of it it's not very uh, it's not very easy to see the detail from this view. Uh, I'm just having a look, see what you can do with it. It might be you could sort of mess around with the gain, something like that, okay? Or put it through, maybe we could put it through, uh, is it an AI range? Or is it just a range? Yeah, I'm going to try AI range. Here we go. Let's just try that. If I output that into here, okay, it wants multiple colors. If I give it a color like that, let's see what that looks like. Can I solo that? Will that work? So because I haven't got this connected to anything, it won't solo that. So I probably need to connect that to our normal camera to allow me to solo it. Mm, that's more complicated than I need. To. Oh, no, there. I think I've got that working. We soloed that. Okay, fine. And if I look at AI range, is that going to allow me to push up the contrast? Oh, there we go. And so I can push up the contrast and have a more contrasty version of that if I want to. There we go. OK, so uh, let's put this back as it was. OK, Ooh, it's going to let me. Uh, so I want to just plug. Sorry, I want to plug that into there to put everything back as it was. 
You can solo that. Excellent. Okay. So, um, what if I wanted to render out? Uh, it looks like it's catching up. Let's have a look. If I solo this, that's fine. That's happy. If I solo this, is it happy now? Hopefully, I haven't broken it. Hmm. Okay. Oh, hang on. I know. Let's solo. Rather than solo that, that's it, solo that. There you go, then it's happy. So if we solo the actual file bit, then it's happy. Great, okay. So we've got that back to normal. So what if I wanted to render out, so I'm going to just turn this off. What if I wanted to render out, um, so I'm just going to just reduce this down here. And if I just, sorry, I'm just going to, move this off here so you'll see that I've actually got this on a turntable oh at least I thought I had it on an animated turntable maybe my my animations turned off I don't know maybe I didn't parent it anyway imagine I had this on a turntable or what I wanted to do was actually just render it out see um, uh, rather than just being black uh, with the uh, with with the helmet, and I could, I suppose, use some compositing software just to kind of put, you know, to key out the black bit and put the helmet on. I could do it that way, I suppose. But if I wanted to render this out uh, on a turntable and actually just see this, but with this helmet, uh, but again with the channel applied to it, uh, then what I'd have to do in this case is rather than just soloing out individual elements inside this hypershade what I would need to do is create a brand new material okay so what I'm going to do is just minimize the hypershade hopefully I won't need it again but anyway uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the renderer okay okay then what I'm going to do is go back to this uh, helmet here I'm going to go right click and I'm going to assign a new material now so I'm going to go assign new material and this time what we're going to do is we're going to create a matte material so this matte material won't respond to any kind of light it will just show the raw image uh, that we're applying to uh, the object uh, on the object. Okay, so if I go under Arnold and hit shader, my computer's getting a bit upset with how much processing I'm asking it to. I'm just going to pause it while it does that. So hit this uh, shader here, and then what we want to do is rather than using an AI standard surface shader, uh, which we've been doing in the past, we're going to use AI matte. Okay, so I'm going to click on AI matte. OK, and now what I should be able to do is if I go right click or give it a moment. OK, it's just because I'm recording the screen at the same time. So uh, now you can see it's created this uh, 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 this this new material here and I can see it in the uh, attribute editor. And what I want to do is just basically assign the channel that I want to see to uh, the color of uh, to the color channel of that material. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the checker pattern click file and then what I'll do is uh, I'll select uh, again I'm just going to go and select um, the uh, uh, the specular roughness for example uh, let's have a look just giving it a minute to update okay so now it's created that file node I can click on that so just give it a moment Okay, and then I'm just going to pick out, so if I go into Helmet, I'm going to just pick out Specular Roughness, click Open, and then I'm not sure if it will appear in the workspace, but if I go into Render now, what you'll see, so it's rendering the entire scene, but this time, you'll see that it's rendering it with this Specular Roughness on this helmet. So I could render out a whole turntable or with it with the background uh, and do it this way if, if I prefer. This is just another alternative. And again, uh, I can just go File, Save, uh, or just do, a, a, as I say, like a batch render or a, or a sequence renderer render to get a turntable with this applied. Okay, so that's how we can actually just render out individual channels uh, to help us kind of visualize uh, how our, uh, how a material is working for a review process. Okay, thank you.